not going to talk much in this one. I just wanted to give you a chance. If you wanted to see how I finished this up, this is your chance. Now we're going to get to hear me talking to myself. <laughs> ah, that's too light. It's a little bit better. does that need to go over? If the paint feels stiff or crusty, just slow down. It might mean it's, it's starting to dry out. It just needs, needs you to take it a little bit slower. Excuse me. Variations of the cast shadows. Those are um, variations in the cast shadows are really fun. Um, and this is really when you get to simulate the effect of light the most, actually. That's better. I'm going to soften this edge though. Cast shadow so it doesn't look like there's a ring around or a halo around the cast shadow. That would flatten it. I need to weaken that edge so that it really kind of attaches to that plane.
I'm just going to use a wet into wet technique. I have the color, the value that I painted down here. I'm just slightly overlapping my brush into that shadow color. And pulling some of that paint out. Maybe it'll kind of sit down a little bit. In this case, on this plane, you remember I didn't add a second layer of paint to some parts of this box because, I mean, it looked fine to me um, from the very first layer. So for that reason, parts of this front plane were kind of dry, and as I'm putting in some more visual information, you know, some of the edges between the brush strokes are just too harsh. So I ended up having to come back in and, and add some of the original uh, value of the paint so that I could get a, you know, use that wet paint into wet paint approach to get a softer edge. So if you're painting uh, with, you know, obviously wet paint and the surface you're painting on is already dry, you're going to get a harder edge. If you're painting wet paint onto wet paint, you're going to get a uh, kind of a, a blendier edge um, and you can create those opportunities when or if you need them thinking through your process drama. Just uh, activate the very front edge of this ground plane. Very carefully. I don't want to bust the illusion by being too dramatic about it. But 
little bit of lighter paint. Kind of fudging it a little bit. <coughs> you know, the light, it doesn't make sense that it would be that little burst of light right there. But if I can make it subtle enough and composed enough, I think that the viewer will buy it. Like they'll believe it is what I mean. You know, if you, a lot of masterworks, um, especially landscapes, you know, if you look close enough with good light logic, you can find all kinds of light logic inconsistencies um, that the artist, you know, did for the sake of composition. You know, there might be a grove of trees in the distance, and when you look at it more closely, you can tell that the light source from on those trees is a totally different light source. Um, you know, you're, you're inventing your own world in these paintings. Even if we're simulating uh, reality, you know, you are, you are the one calling the shots. And your job is not to mindlessly copy nature or mindlessly copy what you see. Your job is to figure out what are the essential characteristics of the things that you see. How are they structurally put together? And how can you recreate them or re-present them? in a way that is novel. Okay, and you can do that, you know, with light, how you deal with light. You can do that with how you, you know, play with value um, or color, um, contrast, or any number of things. Okay, I think this is about as close as I'm going to get it for this project. Our next project will include a full color palette. So you're still going to be trying to get these values um, correctly, but we're going to be uh, mixing some some um, additional colors uh, into the color scheme. Okay.